I'm not against DIR. I'm not against DIR. I'm not against DIR. But in today's video, we're going to talk about why I do not buy into the philosophy of DIR and kind of my history with it as well. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now like the teaser stated, we're going to be talking about the DIR philosophy. And I want to give you my history with it and why I don't necessarily buy into the philosophy as a whole. Now when we say DIR, what do we mean by that? Well, DIR is an acronym for doing it right. And it actually started back in the 1990s by the WKPP, which is the Woodville Cars Plane Project. And if you're interested in what that is, I'll drop you a link down below and you can kind of read up on the history of the WKPP and what their whole purpose of starting the DIR movement or philosophy was all about. But in short, it was all about safety and helping prevent overhead environment fatalities. Now this movement or this philosophy of course extended on into the technical crowd and now it's extended on into the recreational crowd as well. And like I said in the teaser, I'm not against it but you need to understand my history with it so that you can understand why I don't necessarily buy into it. I actually started diving in the 1980s well before DIR was ever a thing. So not only did I get to see it form, I also got to see it grow into what it was and I've also got to see it being corrupted in the scuba industry and that's the current state of it now it's actually been corrupted by a certain crowd of divers and i'll explain at the end of this video what i mean by that so if DIR is all about safety, why do I personally not buy into it? Well, I think DIR is a great thing. I think that there should be standardization between teams. I think that equipment configurations are important in certain types of diving, but I think that it does over it becomes overbearing in certain situations and it's simply not needed for all situations. I kind of refer it to this toolbox here behind me. This toolbox is full of different tools and some tools are the exact same thing such as I've got a battery power drill here with a number two Phillips head and I've got a number two Phillips head screwdriver. Now they do the same thing one does it more efficiently, so why wouldn't I always use it? Well, I think you see where I'm going with this. This doesn't fit into every situation. I need a secondary tool to fit in a different situation. To say something that works for every given situation is simply not the case. I actually want to give you a war story of how I believe that DIR has been corrupted over the years and why it doesn't apply in every situation. Prior to Lake Hickory Scuba, I actually worked at several other dive shops, and one of them I was a manager at for the last two years that it was there. And we were doing a big tri scuba program for a local high school. We had about 20 students coming in, and we had four different instructors between those students. Well, we actually asked some of our dive masters to come in to assist with the training of the tri scuba students. And while there, one of the dive masters, who was a technical diver, and he really bought into the DIR philosophy, showed up to help us teach these tri scuba students and he showed up with a dry suit with a set of steel doubles and a long hose configuration and i think you can kind of see where i'm going with this because we were in an indoor heated pool and if you're familiar with the tri scuba program it's only meant for the shallow end of the pool so three to five feet is all we're going and when i questioned him and asked him about it he said well you know i'm a dir diver and i believe in redundancy and i said you can stand up it's a three foot pool why are you in a dry suit? And he says, once again, I believe in redundancy. If my BC fails, then of course I can pump up my dry suit and use it as buoyancy control. And I, I thought, once again, you're in a three foot pool and it's that corruption. It's that mentality that this situation works for every situation out there is simply not the case. So you can kind of see how it has been corrupted over the years. Now, once again, I'm not against DIR. I think DIR is a great thing. I think that if you're in an overhead environment, and there are certain situations where the philosophy applies, then by all means, you need to be diving that DIR system. If you are on a technical dive that is more than, say, just a, a basic technical dive, meaning you're 150 foot or deeper. I know there's a lot of divers that wear traditional gear that are tech divers. They go down to 150 foot. They spearfish, i.e. I'm one of them. But, the, you know, I don't wear my tech setup when I do that. 
I think there are certain situations when the DIR system applies and there are certain situations when it does not. Now, I want to end this video and state once again, I am not against the DIR movement. I'm not against the philosophy. I'm not against DIR divers. I'm not against training agencies that preach DIR. I'm just trying to explain to you guys why it does not apply to me based off the diving that I do. And I really believe that sometimes being over redundant is sometimes not necessary necessarily um, what we should be doing. You know, when I talk about saying carrying redundant air sources with us, we actually do that in a recreational sense and people don't realize it. As an instructor, I preach the rule of thirds. That means you, you use a thousand, you uh, come back on a thousand, you still have a thousand as a third or as a safety built in. Well, that is my redundant s source in, say, a, um, a recreational sense. If, if I happen to run out of air, there's a problem there because my redundant system is that rule of thirds. Now, there's certain types of dives that I always take a redundant gas source with me, especially when I'm side mounting. I have a totally uh, whole new redundant system with me. But once again, that doesn't always apply in every situation. The last thing I want to kind of talk about here, and just so you guys know, I think sometimes we become too reliant on our equipment and not relying enough on ourselves as far as skills. If a diver says, well, I've got to have this back plate and wing to hold trim when I'm underwater, then that's a you problem. That's not something that the equipment needs to help you with. That's something you need to focus on. Trim and buoyancy. We've got a whole series of videos on trim and buoyancy. I'll actually link them down below that can help you out on getting your trim where it needs to be without having to change equipment. So sometimes I think the DIR philosophy not only can corrupt someone else, I think it has actually been corrupted more so than not. Once again, I'm not against it. I think it's a good thing. I think divers should abide by the DIR philosophy if you're in a situation that necessitates you having that. But with that being said, guys, once again, I'm not against it. It just simply does not apply to me. Whether it applies to you or not, that's a decision you're going to have to make. But like I said, coming from a background prior to DIR, seeing it form, seeing it to grow into what it was, and seeing it being corrupted, that's pretty much why I don't buy into the philosophy because I've seen the whole spectrum of it. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I would like a big discussion down in the comment section below. I want to know what you guys think. If you're a DIR diver, tell me why you're a DIR diver. I would like to know from your perspective why you feel it works in every situation. Or if you are a DIR diver and you agree with me that it doesn't apply in every situation, let me know down below. Because guys, I learn just as much from you as you do from me. And that's what I want on our channel. I want us all learning about scuba and getting better educated in it and becoming safer divers as well. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.